worst polling Democrat against Donald Trump in history on national polls. No one is performing worse than our, no one's performing worse than our, among blacks, among Hispanics, the worst performing Democrat in modern history among those demographics, <coughs> worst performing polling wise among Jews. She is losing key factions of the Democratic base. Muslim voters, she's at under 50, she's at 52% in the latest care poll among black Muslims. She is not doing well. Oh, oh, oh. All right, guys, so recently I've been talking about how there are some major warning signs for Kamala Harris going into October, okay, the last stretch of the presidential campaign season leading up to the election. Kamala Harris is not performing nearly as well as she should be doing in order to feel comfortable on election day. And this is a big problem for Democrats because if Trump ends up overperforming, on election day, which he historically has done, then it is very likely he will win this election, okay? And the liberal media, they're currently losing their minds over this idea that Trump is still in a close race with Kamala Harris, although Kamala Harris, according to them, had the best debate performance ever, and it was one of the worst debate performance ever from Trump. Despite all that, the polls that have come out post-debate, especially at the swing state level, have shown that Hey, voters are kind of going along with Trump. They're kind of like, eh, didn't really learn too much from Kamala. She didn't really impress. Therefore, I'm going to go with what I know, okay? And because of that, you have black liberals in the mainstream liberal media lashing out, specifically at white people who have decided that, hey, you know what? I'm going to vote for Trump, okay? I don't want to support Kamala Harris. And apparently, now you're already seeing these people play the blame game, right? Point the fingers at people for why Kamala Harris is not doing as well as they feel she should. So without further ado, let's get into it. Wait, can I say something about this? Because this is what really bothers me when we have this discussion. I never really talk about this because it's not politically correct to say it, but oh. he's not dead hit because of white people. I mean, the majority of white people support Donald Trump and they have they supported him in 2016. They supported him in 2020. And they'll probably support him in 2024. If it were up to black people or Latinos and Asian Americans and other people oh. of color, he would lose in a landslide. Yeah, but see, that's not this country, right? Unfortunately for this guy, see, this is what they want. He's saying out loud what they really want, right? He wishes in his head that there were less white people to the point where the so-called people of color would dominate. Now, here's the problem with what this guy is saying. What he's saying is not really even grounded in facts and reality in the sense that he's lumping in all of these groups, aka non-whites, and trying to say, well, if the non-whites could have it their way, then this country would be overwhelmingly Democrat. Now, here's the problem with that. When you break it down even further, okay, among racial groups, racial demographics, um, black people are the only group of people that are voting for Democrats at an 80, 85, 90 plus clip. Okay, if you look at black women, they vote Democrat 95 plus percent. However, if you look at Hispanics, um, what he's saying is not necessarily true. Hispanics, on the other hand, actually, you know, <laughs> seem to have some diversity of thinking when it comes to how they vote. And Trump has done very well among Hispanics. In some polls, uh, he's actually up with Hispanics. He's doing better than Kamala Harris with Hispanics. So what this dude is saying may overall be true in regards to, well, if white people didn't vote, then uh, Democrats win overwhelmingly. But that's only because black people vote Democrat in an 80, 85, 90 plus percent clip. Okay. But the reality is this, in this election, uh, Kamala Harris is actually doing better with white people than Joe Biden did in 2020 and Hillary Clinton did in 2016. Okay. Uh, but Kamala Harris's problem actually is with so-called people of color. That's the irony here, okay? Because Kamala Harris is losing support among black people. She's polling the worst that any Democrat has ever polled uh, with black people, okay, against Trump, uh, and also with Latino voters as well, too. Basically, across the board with minorities, except women, right? And even with women, she's not doing as well as you would think she would be doing, uh, especially considering how we're living in a post-Roe v. Wade world. But Regardless, um, this guy is blaming white people, but it's actually not white people that are Kamala's problem. If you look at white support for Democrats historically, um, it's never been higher than it is right now. Okay, The problem with Kamala Harris is that she's actually losing uh, support among the so-called minorities. Right. And again, I think that's the irony of what this guy is saying here. He's blaming white people, but it's actually the so-called minorities that are turning away from Kamala Harris.
No, he, he's very no, gaining. No, no, African American no, man and Hispanics. I, 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 but it's I, still I, about no, white I, dominance. I understand it's that. Still but, about but, white dominance. But, you know, it, it, it is a he's he's a, he's an elite because he protects and projects the idea of protecting white supremacy, and that's what uh, they're uh, that's what resonates with people. People were talking about people were talking about economic anxiety in 2016, and then Trump went off and he he let a cavalcade of racism. I'll ask you this question. He's not even serious. If that is your theory, if that is your theory, I'm 100 percent sure. If that's your theory, yes. Then, then to answer what Urban is asking, why then is Trump improving with voters of color? He's not improving with voters of color. Not improve, no, I'm sorry. He's yes. not improving. He with has the, more yeah, support no, I'm, I'm, than I'm, Republicans in the past. No, with both his he is delusional. He's in denial right now, right? Because this guy, again, he's one of the most ignorant people they bring on CNN. I don't understand why they bring this guy. Keith Boykin is his name, by the way. I don't know why they bring him on CNN. I mean, this is the same guy that claimed that burning an American flag was patriotic, right? That's a patriotic thing to do. He has said some of the dumbest stuff on television, and here he is making a delusional claim, not acknowledging the fact that Kamala Harris is just doing worse among so-called minorities than most Democrats historically, right? And she's allegedly a black woman, right? And she's not doing very well. Instead of just acknowledging the facts, this guy, in his reality, he believes that Politics basically comes down to white versus black, right? Uh, whites versus non-whites. That's the way he sees the world. And in his mind, he can't imagine a world where non-whites aren't overwhelmingly supporting Democrats. But the reality is, is that that's changing, right? It is changing and it's changing very quickly. Spanish no, and no, I understand right that he has done better in better than he's than uh, than other candidates have done. No, but no, he's, no, he's, but he's but is improving. He improved on his 2016 performance in 2020, yeah. and the polls suggest the that he's improving now. The Washington so even Post, if you go Ipsos by 2016 and 2020, today, then then the what? The Washington Post Ipsos poll that came out today said that he's actually losing support in the black vote. But uh, New York and Sanders said the opposite. And he's actually and Kamala Harris is gaining support. The third party candidates are declining in their support. So, you know, but Brian, I, I, Brian's disagreeing and, 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 with you. You I, I, know what's going on? And he's clearly growing support. No, no, and but this it's is not a, just about is, white dominance. Right. It's about male dominance. I don't, I don't think, any of a, I don't but, think but, most people will be surprised let, if Donald Trump Brian, does better with Latinos and blacks than he did uh, but, in 2016 than he did in 2020. Listen, uh, what do I hear? I hear people tell me that they like how uh, they like his mouth. Some some people that what turns me off turn some people on. They think he's like, being authentic. Yeah, they think he's being right. unfiltered. They think he's tough. True. They think he, you know, he stands up for what he believes. So it, it antagonizes most Latinos. It antagonizes most African Americans. But certainly there's some people well, that, well, that, for whom it appeals. And, and that's yeah, so <laughs> Anna Navarro is basically saying what probably a lot of her Latino friends say behind closed doors that a lot of people don't say out loud, right? Because I personally have experienced um black folks uh out in the streets that are just like yeah i'm voting for trump <laughs> right like they, they just are going to vote for trump because they felt like the economy was better under trump they don't like what's happening right now and they vote for trump this is why i think the polls are severely underestimating trump's support right like if you actually ask people on the street who they're voting for if you actually talk to people um a lot of them are just like yeah i'm voting for trump right and it's actually like more socially acceptable to openly be a trump supporter than to openly support Biden and Kamala Harris like that's the crazy thing because before it used to be different in the sense that you know it would kind of be a stigma if you were openly support Trump and you know it was fine to openly support Democrats that is how now reversed I don't I don't think I've ever seen a Biden Harris uh shirt or any type of paraphernalia out in public now maybe I have but I I, I just can't think of the last time I've seen it right I, I haven't seen a yard side I haven't seen any of this stuff but I see a whole lot of Trump stuff Okay, a whole lot of Trump stuff all the time, right? But I'm telling you, when you actually ask regular normal people on the streets, a lot of them are voting Trump. I mean, look at that video from Don Lemon. Don Lemon was walking around on the streets in New Jersey, again, blue New Jersey, and this dude couldn't find any Kamala supporters, right? <laughs> a vast majority of people he was talking to were Trump supporters, and this dude was shocked. He was shocked. So I think that the polls are under underestimating Trump's support big time, again, among normies who can't be polled. And I think that is the reality here. And even Anna Navarro is acknowledging the reality because I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people, uh, like normal people that she probably knows that are like, yeah, I I'm going to vote for Trump, even if they are Latino or whatever.
Exactly. My point, right. though, the point I was trying to get at is that, yes, there are, there, are a, there are a significant number of people of color who support Donald Trump, but that's still a small, small minority, especially in the black community. You're talking about 85 to 90 percent of black people will support Kamala Harris. That even among black men, you know, so the idea that somehow the, the, the yeah, Donald Trump Keith, is winning it's, it's a large same number. the we were yeah. talking no, about no. with RFK. When you're talking no, about... No, I agree with you about, on that. You know, the margins are very important. the swing states where... I, Latinos are, you know, five, six percent in Georgia. They're five, I six totally percent understand. in Pennsylvania, I get that. Michigan. I get I'm not, I'm not saying that that can't make the difference. I'm just saying that we're misrepresenting who these communities are. To, to, to pick a few unrepresentative black men and say, oh, well, black men are supporting Donald Trump, when 85 to 90 percent of black men are supporting I, I Kamala Harris, that. is, I think is that's completely very misleading. misleading. I think that's it's very misleading. Misleading. Black men. To be yeah. clear, we, we didn't say that at no. this table. No, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying Donald in general. Trump. But, uh, but, but <laughs> I think Anna's point is correct, that yeah. there is... Even if it's a slight movement, it only there takes is a few to make a huge difference. It, it yes. only takes yes, a few. Exactly. Okay, I just want to say, in addition to white dominance, it's also about preserving the status of men. And we should interrogate Absolutely. what is it that appeals. I'm not perfect. I learned some of this stuff since I was five or six years old. Men in this society are in a very interesting place right now with what the messaging is from the Trump campaign. And I just think that's worth interrogating. All right, everyone. Yeah, I think Stick. that Brian Shelter here, outside of the white dominance thing, because, again, this is really not about white people versus everybody else. This is about the fact that normal people, whether you're black, white, whatever your skin color is, we're fed up with uh, the Democrats and their open border policies, uh, bad economy, whatever. But the point he's bringing up about men is a very, very, very interesting point because apparently Kamala Harris is struggling among white men in the Midwest, right? Apparently she's losing support. And that is why you're seeing tightening in the polls in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, because the white males in those states are being turned off by Kamala, which is hilarious to think about because, again, she picked Tim Walz for that very problem, right? That very issue that she knows she's going to have problems getting the white males. So this is why she's out here saying crazy stuff, right? Like, oh, I'm a gun owner. Kamala Harris is not a gun owner, okay? Kamala Harris has never said she was a gun owner before until now. Well, why is she saying that? Because she thinks that is what white Midwestern men want to hear, right? This is what she thinks, right? The white man in the Rust Belt, okay? She she definitely is feeling the heat. Tim Walsh was picked for that reason, but it seems to have backfired because Tim Walsh is not a masculine man, right? I mean, Tim Walsh is kind of like having a second woman on the ticket. Honestly, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, basically Trump is running against two women, straight up. Low key, I mean, any man that would put tampons in a boy's bathroom, like, come on, we, again, we're running against two women here, okay? At least in my book, in, as far as I see it, right? And I think a lot of men are looking at it that way. There's nothing masculine about that ticket. There's nothing that serves the interests of men or the direction that men want this country to go in. Uh, the campaign is not focused on the real issues, the real problems, anything like that. And it's just not a ticket that I, I can see men getting behind, right? So more so than anything, it's not really a racial thing. OK, it is actually really more of a gender thing. That's what it's going to come down to. This election is going to be a referendum on wokeness and identity politics. That's what it seems like. OK, and the biggest gap, in my opinion, is going to be the gender gap, not necessarily the racial gap, because the racial gap is closing. OK, you have more white people that are supporting Democrats, less so-called people of color supporting Democrats. Right. So it, it kind of evens out right on racial lines. Right. But when it comes to the gender stuff, that's where you see the big gap. And um, I just think that this guy's an idiot. And you know he's an idiot because this whole CNN panel ganged up on this guy for saying something so stupid. But what he wants to do here is that he wants to blame white people and say, well, it's the white man's fault. It's, it's white people's fault that Kamala Harris is uh, in a tight race or losing. Because I think really the reality is that she's actually losing. I think the polls are definitely underestimating Trump's support. Um, but again, this is what they want to do. They want to blame white people and say it was white people's fault, but Kamala Harris is actually doing better among white people than Democratic candidates in the past, and Kamala's just doing worse among so-called people of color <laughs> than Democrats in the past. I think the main reason why is because the so-called people of color are the ones that are disproportionately affected by the bad economy and the immigration policies of the Biden-Harris administration. But again, this guy, he'll never come to that conclusion because uh, he's just not smart enough, right? That's just what it comes down to. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.